Antimicrobial resistance, AMR, is when treatment of infectious diseases is no longer effective because the microbes have developed resistance to the drugs that previously worked. There are different types of infectious pathogens that cause diseases, including viruses, bacteria, parasites and fungi, all of which can develop resistance to antimicrobials. The emergence and spread of AMR is complex, with linkages between human and animal health and the environment. AMR is an issue for the health system. The misuse of antimicrobial drugs without prescriptions from healthcare professionals and the inappropriate prescribing without proper diagnosis all add to the problem. AMR is also a problem in the animal health and agricultural sectors, where the misuse of antibiotics accelerates the emergence of antimicrobial resistance. Inappropriate food handling encourages the spread of resistant pathogens. There is a need for new antimicrobials and diagnostics to effectively treat and diagnose infections. However, today, the R&D pipeline is virtually empty. Infection prevention and control measures, including effective hand hygiene, sanitation and wastewater management are crucial in combating AMR in the hospital and community setting. Our behaviour contributes to the development and spread of resistant infections. Education and awareness raising on the correct use of antimicrobials to always take the right dose for the right duration and only with the prescription from a healthcare professional. Multi-sectoral actions are required to combat AMR. For this, regional cooperation and political commitment is key. Some of the problems that we're seeing with antibiotic resistance and antimicrobial resistance are indicating that the problem is significantly widespread throughout the region and certainly in Cambodia. When patients present here, they often come with a history and journey of a long uh, series of encounters with different other types of medical professionals. They come to us with fevers, other infections that have persisted for a long time and have tried to access some kind of care, often through drug sellers, um, to deal with those symptoms. As the medical doctor, we was really concerned what is going on. And so far in the hospital itself, we reveal a lot of E. coli resistant, uh, Klebsiella resistant, MOSA, and last year, is, I remember well, we had three or four cases with carbapenem resistance. That is more concern for us because the country was really poor and if you had the carbapenem resistance, that is the killing field for our community. Antimicrobial resistance reduces the effectiveness of treatment. Thus, patients remain infectious for a longer time, increasing the risk of spreading resistant microorganisms to others. When infections become resistant to first-line drugs, more expensive therapies must be used. Resistant infections result in a longer duration of illness and treatment, greater risk of death, increased health care costs, and an economic burden on families and societies. TB and malaria, for example, are diseases that used to be effectively cured with antimicrobials. But today, Antimicrobial resistance poses the threat to reverse the gain of eliminating TB and malaria, since they are now more difficult and more expensive to treat. Without effective antimicrobials for prevention and treatment of infections, the success of modern medicine, such as an organ transplantation, cancer chemotherapy and major surgery would be compromised. It's not something that suddenly arrives. It's something that's been growing over time. The use of antibiotics and medicines generally is on the increase because with economic development, we have a growing middle class in many countries who have expectations that they will access more drugs. And they want to be cured 
and they believe, rightly or wrongly, that antibiotics is the solution. The belief is actually coming from the patient itself that when I go to a pharmacy, the pharmacy will give me prescription medication or antibiotic uh, medication to me. So if the pharmacist doesn't give it, then they feel that the pharmacist is not doing their job. And part of it, it's our fault. Pharmacists here are acting as a, a prescriber, prescribing antibiotics to patients. When there is an infection that's passed around, then who t bears the responsibility? The doctor's role is paramount. Certainly in Fiji, uh, antibiotics are a prescription medicine which can only be dispensed upon the prescription of a doctor. Therefore, he has within him the ability to control uh, the use of antibiotics. It's getting worse year by year, and in the future, 10, 15 years from now, I'm certain there will be an outbreak of some form that will be significantly lethal to a large number of the population. When we uh, look at antimicrobial resistance, it's like a battle that unfortunately we are losing. The reality of it is you could have death on the scale of what we witnessed in the pre-antibiotic era. And I, I guess as a clinician, uh, I, uh, that is of worry. The misuse of antibiotics in the animal and environmental sector accelerates the emergence of antimicrobial resistance. Inappropriate food handling encourages the spread of resistant pathogens. There is a direct link uh, between the agriculture sector and uh, the human health sector in as far as antibiotic usage is concerned. There are a lot of antibiotics in the market that are being used for animal or agriculture sector and the same antibiotics are also used in the human health sector to prevent or to treat a particular and specific disease being caused by the same pathogen that causes both of humans or the animal side. The more these drugs are abused, the greater the likelihood that microbes will become resistant, thereby placing livestock and livelihoods at risk. The extent of use is still not really very well documented across countries, but we know that in a number of our countries in the region, food export is a very important part of the economy. And of course, if you've got a strong economic driver, then you want to make sure that firstly, your animals are healthy, and secondly, they grow to be fat and plump and juicy and tasty. The question is the extent to which antibiotics are necessary as growth promoters, and whether that's an unnecessary use. And so here, we might be needing to look much more closely at that issue, both from the viewpoint of how do we control access to antibiotics for agricultural and animal production purposes, versus the extent to which they are needed for health purposes in those sectors. Sir Alexander Fleming's discovery of penicillin in 1928 led to the beginning of a golden age of antibiotics. Unfortunately, the effectiveness of some currently available antibiotics are in question. One of the biggest concerns is that we don't have enough in the pipeline and that for many pharmaceutical companies, they can't see the business case to invest in R&D we now face the dangerous risk of an infection for which an effective antibiotic might not be available. We have evidence coming from six government laboratories in Cambodia that the levels of antibiotic resistance are quite high. So for example, here you see resistance of these bacteria against ampicillin, which is available, uh, freely available uh, in Cambodia is 100%. Resistance against other antibiotics such as uh, ceftriaxone or uh, ciprofloxacin oscillate between 33 and 95%. So cipro is not as freely available as the other ones and you can see the levels of resistance are not as high. But if you look at the other antibiotics including gentamicin or sulfa, you see the levels of resistance are above 90%. I'm concerned because we've really noticed how this increase you know, has happened so, so quickly. And uh, now it seems like uh, some of them are getting resistant to all the antibiotics that we test them against. 
Surveillance depends on microbiology laboratories which can accurately identify resistant microorganisms. Low-income countries often lack such laboratories, and where laboratories exist, the means to check the reliability of their work are often lacking. Surveillance is needed to detect resistant microorganisms and follow their spread among people and geographic areas. By doing so, outbreaks of diseases caused by drug-resistant infections can be accurately investigated, thus tracking the use and misuse of antimicrobial medicines, so that the public health consequences can be fully assessed. About the only thing that the diagnostic microbiology laboratories can do, and, I, and, and this is very important, is to provide reliable antibiotic susceptibility testing results, which are used not only for the treatment of individual patients, but also for the development of antibiograms in local hospitals, uh, and also uh, antibiograms that can be used at the national level for treatment policy guidelines. Infection prevention and control measures, including effective hand hygiene, sanitation, and wastewater management are crucial in combating AMR in the hospital and community setting. If we actually think about the scale of problem in terms of people needing antibiotics, why do they need it? Because they've got an infection. What do we have to do to decrease the burden of infection? That's one way of actually using these precious resources more effectively. There are some engineering fixes that are possible, like better water and sanitation, having water supplies in health centers, which doesn't exist in many countries. These things will help, but you also have to have improved hygiene practices. It is important to promote the effective hand hygiene and basic sanitation to prevent infections from happening in the first place. People should have the skills and knowledge to make informed decisions about how to prevent infection and reduce transmission of infectious diseases through these simple, cheap and effective measures, such as hand washing, using safe water sources and routine vaccinations. Does hospital have a problem with the water supply? So they abstract two boreholes, but still we have uncertainty about the quality of the water because there is no water quality test, no water quality monitoring in that uh, hospital. The spread of antibiotic residues and resistant bacteria through untreated urban and hospital wastewater, animal feces used as fertilizer, and runoff from fisheries all impact the environment presenting a growing and serious public health problem. The environment, including crops, becomes a common denominator and breeding ground for the emergence and transfer of resistant genes between bacteria and ultimately back to humans and animals. We have come to realize how big an issue this is, antimicrobial resistance, and it's something that people don't really understand in this country. So. One of the things that we need to do is to make sure that awareness is raised, that people are aware. You know, when people know about something, that something is wrong, is good, only when they know, knowledge itself is a great empower when people are aware of this. So that's one of the things that we need to do. We need to make sure that the public is aware, that those who deal with antibiotics are aware. We are all consumers of food, and we could be asking questions about the food supply, the sources of food, how the animals, the fish, were raised, where it comes from, because as consumers we can also help shape markets. And that becomes a very important part of how we behave as global citizens. We have consumers who are not aware of the use and abuse of antibiotics. Uh, we understand that there are consumers who Take anti uh, do not take antibiotics as prescribed. I think it's important for us to differentiate to the public the difference between viral and uh, bacterial infection. But it is more strategic for us to utilize such advocacy groups such as the Consumer Council. We at the Council have decided to undertake campaign activities where, uh, which will ensure that consumers are educated on the use and abuse of antibiotics 
some of the mechanisms that we will use um, you know, would be to publish materials in simple English or vernacular languages so that consumers are able to understand uh, in their own way on the use and abuse of the uh, product or the medicine. We are doing something about it as well. We're making changes by providing more education to our pharmacists. We're making changes by providing more education to the pharmacy students. And uh, we're hoping that the consumer will, will start seeing the, uh, the changes uh, from our pharmacy, um, consulting uh, on, on antibiotic resistance by telling them that they should go see a doctor, for example, if they, they ask for, for antibiotic. Uh, and, and hopefully that uh, other pharmacists in our industry will start seeing what we're doing and will eventually start to change slowly one by one, one by one. Countries in the Western Pacific region have been undertaking the annual World Antibiotic Awareness Week campaigns as part of the advocacy and awareness raising on AMR. And most of the countries in the region have developed or are in the process of developing the national action plans to combat the AMR. To ensure access to effective antimicrobials for future generations, communities, consumers, healthcare professionals, veterinarians, policymakers, and the private sector must closely work together to tackle antimicrobial resistance. It's often very easy to talk about the importance of working together with other sectors. It's not always easy to get people to the same table. And so being able to actually come together at the bureaucratic level, at the level of government ministers, and at the level of international organizations is fantastic. This is the first time the Western Pacific and Southeast Asia to come together as a group to explore common opportunities and challenges of AMR. We must ensure that all countries follow multi-sectoral One Health strategies with strong national action plans and coordination across all sectors, including veterinary medicine, and agriculture, and human health. On behalf of WHO, we stand ready to support all efforts to fight AMR and safeguard development plans. This meeting is terrifically important, bringing ministers together from two different regions, not only the health ministers, but actually importantly, the ministers for animal husbandry and agriculture. Antimicrobial resistance is a One Health issue. They need to do this together and we can crack it. <laughs>